Welcome back, and in this video we will be looking at auto-matching, which is a very effective way of automatically assigning resources to tasks based on data that is in the model and schedule. So to do that, I'm going to go to 3D Objects, and then right-click, Collapse All, and then gradually expand the structure and only load structural columns and structural framing. Then I'm going to look at the relevant activities in the schedule. So if we scroll under metals, there's structural framing and plumb bolt weld for areas one through four. And then I can double click here to center these activities in my Gantt chart. And for the rest of this video, I really recommend just watching the process without actually going along with it and then pause the video and try to do it on your own. So we'll have time to do that. So we're going to start by investigating our resources. So if you select one resource, and make sure it's only one. So in this case, I have more than one resources. So I'll just select one, hit the escape, and then just select one. Go to resource properties and user fields, which is the small cursor icon between two curly brackets. And then look at the user fields and realize that task location area one can be matched to part of the name of the activity. So usually you're matching a user field to either part of the name of the activity or an activity code uh, that is in your schedule. And since we only have one thing to match, we're going to have to use controlled auto matching, which is when you select the activities, select the resources, and then tell Synchro to only run the auto matching algorithm on the selected activities and resources. And this saves us from accidentally auto matching the steel for area one for with, for example, slab on deck area one, or structural framing area one with the foundations area one. So when you have more parameters to auto match, for example, the area as well as the CSI code or the trade or the subcontractor, then you wouldn't have to use controlled auto matching as much and you could potentially get away with just using auto matching without selecting anything. But this is perfectly valid, so let's do that. So we're gonna be assigning resources, so that's under the assign resources tab. And then auto matching, and let's create a new rule. You can use previously created rules or sample rules, but let's create a new one. So let's call this something meaningful, which is user field um, task location to activity name, because that's what we'll be matching. And we're gonna use only selected resources and only selected tasks. Uh, that's the controlled auto matching part. And for the relations, we're going to use many to many. And then we're going to add an expression. I'll come back and explain the rest of these options once we do this. So for the first expression, we're going to use a user field. And you can start spelling it, then quit, and then find it in the drop down. So task location. To the name of the activity, however, it's not an exact match, it's a substring. Then click Save and hit OK. Then we could choose the appearance profile and hit search. We can investigate the what's been auto-matched here. Every time it changes color, it's a different group. And you can click and see the parameters here and click and see the parameters here. However, what I like to do is to assign all and then visually double check that everything's correct by simply dragging the focus time. This looks good. So I can select these again and now select the plumb bolt weld area one, two, three, four, run the auto matching rule again. However, this time I'm gonna use maintain, search, assign all, and then drag the focus time. Notice that while it's erecting area one, nothing's happening then while it's erecting area two, it's plumbing and bolting area one, etc. So pause the video now. I'll leave this up so you can see the rule if you get lost. However, try as much as possible to do it on your own and then get back to this. If you need to watch the video again, you can do that. So pause the video now and try to do it. Welcome back. Hopefully you were able to auto match the steel to the relevant activities. If not, that's okay. Simply just watch the video again. Now we'll explain some stuff that we skipped over. 
For example, we ignored assigned resources and we, we didn't ignore assigned resources or tasks with assignment. It wouldn't have mattered if we did, since nothing was assigned here. Uh, you can also ignore summary tasks or merge resource groups. Um, the relations none is used when you want to search and then evaluate if you want to match it or not. Uh, you can add more expressions and then here we don't need to, but let's pretend we do. For example, we're going to auto match the user field uh, family name to the name of the parent and that's how you use, use parent if you're auto matching to the name of the parent of the activity or for example of the parent of the resources you use this when you use subdivision a lot uh, and then you click save and then you can specify if this is an and rule or an or rule then you have to click save again that's how you create a second expression so I'm going to remove that since we don't need it and then for exact versus substring, exact is used when you're matching exactly something to something else. In this case, it's a substring. Exact means the task name would have would have had to be area one or area two. A longest common substring is also a version of substring. Separators is used when you have an exact match that's in between, for example, uh, dashes. So you can use separators and just type in a dash, but then you'd use exact instead of substring and then you know it's case sensitive. So there you have it. In the next video, we'll have a challenge, an auto matching challenge, and I'll see you then. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.